just raise up your hand. We are, we are not barbarians. Amen. Don't worry. If you, and because it's, a, it's competition this morning, praise the Lord. If you get 99%, you, you won't get it. It's got to be 100%. Because somebody may say something close to somebody close to somebody close to somebody and close to somebody. And so you need to get the sister Irene. Yes. All right. Thank you. I saw another hand over there. That hand seems to have chicken out. <laughs> Sister Elizabeth. Oh, that's the one you hear mostly. Okay, anybody from this side? Yes, Sister Lola. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, Sister Shalom. All right. Thank you so much. Put your hands together for them. Uh, I see more hands. If, well, no, no matter what to say, we'll clap for you. Yes, Sister, <laughs> Sister Ladele. Without compromise. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please jam your hand together for all the people that spoke. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I brought that up again because you are going to hear that testimony again. Amen. Because that is the best of all the testimonies I have to share. But I've had me give testimony of somebody maybe was tied up in the womb and uh, couldn't deliver and then just a simple word of prayer, the miracle happened. Uh, those of you that have been here for long, you are there with us at New York when somebody completely paralyzed. Just a single word of prayer, the power of God touched her, and she got up walking. The witch here, she came away. She came on witch here. I don't know what they did with the witch here. Praise the Lord. People that were barren, all those are good. I can continue and continue. But, like you all said, the most important one that I share most everywhere I go is this one that keeps me going. Amen? And it's the only one that can keep you going, that can keep you preserved and protected. I'm going to share with you that uh, as a minister, you are exposed to attack from different angles, especially when you are always fighting the devil and casting him out of the lives of people and hindering his work in different and diverse ways. He's not going to be happy with you. But when your life is right with God, the angels of the Lord will encamp around about you. Amen? That no arrow or that of the wicked one will ever get into you. And so, if you're a true servant of the Lord, there is nothing for you to be afraid of. Amen? When you lay down, don't worry about any dream. The Lord is watching over you. Amen? When you go to your place of work and things are happening over there, don't be moved. Winds will blow. The storm will rage. 
all kinds of things will happen. But always remember that he that watches over his trainer never sleep nor slumber. He will be with you. He will keep you to the very end in the name of Jesus. And that's why today I'll be talking on genuine compassion and its clear evidences. Genuine compassion. There are people that claim they are born again. But we cannot see the clear clarity, evidence of that conversion. We are in doubt of their life. We are in doubt of their testimony. The only thing we know is they tell us they are Christian. The only thing we know is they tell us they go to church. Or maybe we see them go to church. And they are very passionate about going to church. Maybe they even talk about God. Maybe anything they say, they would even reference the Bible. But the Bible says people like that, they have the form of godliness. Help me with the rest. But they deny the power thereof. A few weeks ago, I think it was last month, I traveled out of the country. And then I met this particular lady who goes to this church and a minister in that church. And she was telling me and some other people that somebody did this and that to her and she rained curses on that person. Amen? And she began, she began to say some of the curses. I said, it's okay. Praise the Lord. And she's very, very proud of the church she goes. You heard the pastor say earlier on that some years back, he invited somebody to the church. And that invitee got to know that there is another person that was attending that particular church location. And the invitee said, I know that individual. If that is where that person goes, please, I cannot come to that church. I pray that you will not be a black leg in the camp of the saints of God. I pray that you will not be an hindrance to the conversion of the lives of others in Jesus' name. So, if you say you are born again, if you say you are converted, if you say you are a saint, if you say you are a child of God, there is a song that says, if you say you love my Jesus, if you say you are saved by grace, then show it by the life that you live. By the life that you live. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. It says, Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Look at that man. Look at that woman. You can tell the clear difference between his or her current life and the past life. You can tell the clear difference between the words and the languages of the person now and in the past. You can tell the evidently clear difference between the dressing, the posture of that individual now and in the past. Therefore, if any man, and mark that word, any man, the word man there is generic for the whole creation. If any man, man, male, man, female, child, boy, child, girl, if any man be in Christ, if anyone, any human being, be in Christ, you said, yes, I used to be in the world, but I left the world and I came to Christ Jesus. I used to be in Egypt, but now in the commonwealth of Israel. I used to be an alien before, but now a citizen of the Israel of God. If any man be in Christ, whether you are American or African, whether you are European or Asian, 
if any man be in Christ, old things are passed away. The Bible must say, behold, look at it. We can see the evidence, look at it. We can see the proof, look at it. All things have become new. Pay attention here. Not some things. How many things? Not many things. How many things? Not most of the things. How many things? All things. And that is why you want to always come back to the feet of the cross and daily examine yourself and daily examine your life. And then be able to say like Paul the Apostle that it is no longer I that live it, but Christ lives in me. You want to be able to say it to yourself that indeed the old person in me is gone. And God will give you the grace in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 1 from verse 12. It says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. Who has enabled me? Pay attention. It's a personal thing. Pay attention. It's not an organizational thing. It's not a congregational thing. It's not a family thing. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. Who has enabled me? For all that he counted me faithful. No matter what is going on in your family, in your church, the name of the church, in your community, you want to be sure that individually you are counted faithful, putting me into the ministry. Who before was a blasphemer, contrast between the past and the present, and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy. Somebody here will obtain mercy today. Because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Uh, if you pay attention to my testimony, I told you my, the, the testimony of my compassion. While I was there in religion, I was very, very honest. And I can tell you now, I was very, very sincere. And everything I did, I did them heartily to the best of my knowledge. And that is, God used me, I mean, my own personal life to teach me that morality is not righteousness. Self-righteousness is different from the righteousness of Christ. Amen? Paul said, he did it ignorantly. I was sinning ignorantly. Of course, I knew something was wrong because those days I would read the Bible and I would preach to people and I want to do what I was reading but I like I lack the grace I lack the power I lack the uh, divine enablement I lack the inner strength and before I know it when I find myself found myself in danger it wasn't anything difficult for me to tell a lie because the grace was not there but praise be the Lord. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. And one day I found that grace. And I obtained that grace. And the mercy of God came upon me in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8 verses 1 and 2. Romans Chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who walk not after the flesh. Now pay attention here. Look up at me. After you give your life to Christ, genuinely, sincerely, honestly, the devil will not just say, oh, bye-bye. You are gone and gone forever. The devil doesn't do that. The devil will find a way to come and try you. A way to come and tempt you. And the devil will tell you, don't ever think you are free. You remember five years ago, how many years ago? You committed immorality. 
18 years ago, you told a lie. And then, uh, just three weeks ago, you just gave your life to Christ. Three weeks ago, you did this and that. He is the adversary of the saints, the enemy. So as to make you feel you cannot be free, as if you are a captive forever. Somebody say, I am, I am free. From the captivity of the devil, I am free. From the bounds of wickedness, I am free. From the powers of darkness, I am free. And never to be bound anymore. You remind yourself when the devil comes and reminds you of things you did in the past. Tell the devil, I was once your captive, but now I am free. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, once you are genuinely born again, you need that assurance of salvation, confirmation within your spirit. The Bible says that there is therefore now, somebody say now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. That simply means in the past, you were walking in the flesh. In the past, you were following the dictates of the enemy. In the past, you were fulfilling the, 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 the desires and the laws of the flesh. In the past, you are a slave and a servant of sin. But now, you walk no longer after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. From the law of sin and death. I need an amen. amen. The book of Psalm 51, verses 6 through to 10. It says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. Can you see? Look at, look at me. A lot of people does not seem to understand salvation. Conversion. When you talk about conversion, it means a complete turn around. You've been going southward. You made a U-turn and now you are going northward. You've been going eastward. You made a U-turn and then you are going westward. The Bible says that by the grace of God. Amen? The, the, the Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part. The inward part. The inward part. When there is this genuine conversion, it takes place from the inside of you. Everything you do in life comes from within. The lie you tell from within. The anger from within. The bitterness from within. The hatred from within. Stealing from within. And so, the Bible says... God desires the truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. I pray you'll be wise. And I went further in that chapter. He said, Purge me with high soap and I shall be clean. Now, we do not need high soap anymore. We need the blood of Jesus. I said, We need the blood of Jesus. He said, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Listen. When you genuinely, please mark that word, genuine. Genuinely give your life to Christ Jesus. There is going to be some joy. There is going to be some gladness oozing out from your belly, from your heart, from your soul. It is called the joy of salvation. It's not going to be mechanical. It's not going to be hypocritical. Even when nobody sees, the joy is there. Even when you are going through pain, challenges or difficulties in life because every human being do have their own challenges in life. 
the joy of salvation will be there. Even when you have lost money, or you have lost a child, or you have lost a spouse, or you have lost a job, or you have lost a position, and then you remember the joy of salvation. And then you know that he that watches over his friend never sleep no slumber. He will make ways for you. He will turn things around in Jesus' name. God desires the truth in the inward parts. I look at three points. Number one, the condition of the old creature. The condition of the old creature. Point number two, the contrast with the new creature. We want to contrast the old and the new together. The difference between the two of them. And finally, point number three, the creation of the new creature. How can we obtain this new creature? What's the first point? Who can remind me? The condition of the old creature, the state of your life, the state of your heart. Come back to that, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Ephesians chapter 2, I look at verse 3. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein, that's uh, from verse 1 now, from verse 1. Verse 2, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that not worketh in the children of disobedience. Stop right there. Look at those things carefully. Don't rush. And if you notice, I'm taking my time preaching this morning. Amen? And since you don't have me all the time, if I can just do combo message for you today, I think you'll be happy. Amen? So if I can just preach three hours message, four hours message, amen? I need a better one. Praise the Lord. Come back to this Ephesians. It says, and you had he quickened. Somebody that is quickened is somebody that is passive, somebody that is dead, somebody that is inactive. And now he's saying, you are quickened. And now he said, he went further to explain, who were dead? Dead in trespasses and in sin. That means you were a slave to it. You are a servant of sin and transgression. You are dead in need. Your food is sin. Your drink is sin. The air you breathe is sin. Your eyes are full of sin. Your tongue is poisonous, like the poison of, a, of an ass. Who were dead? But mark that word again. Were in the past. Were. Because now he's saying, you are being quickened. You have been resurrected. You have been made to come alive. You have been made to become active in Christ Jesus. And then he's saying, your old life, you were dead in sin and trespasses. Now, look at verse 2. I always tell us that every human being is under the control of one out of how many spirits? Two. Give me the first one. The spirit of God and the spirit of the devil, evil spirit. is either of the two. Now, come to verse 2 now. It says, we are in, in time past, in the past, ye walked according to the course, the pattern, the manner, the dictates, the direction. Ye walked according to the course of this world, according to, read for me what follow, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh where? In the children of disobedience. Are we communicating? That is why it's not enough for you to say, I go to church. It's not enough for you to say, I can quote the Bible. 
I have memorized it. Anybody can do that. Anybody can cram any passage of the Bible. But by what spirit are you operating? By what spirit are you doing the things that you are doing? And the Lord is telling us that that spirit of the devil is operating in the world and making people to be disobedient and it is the prince of the power of the air. Verse 3. It says, among whom also we all had our conversation when? In the past, in time past. So, you want to be sure that your old life is totally gone. Your new life is different from your old life, your old life. And it says, in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And where by nature, by the nature of sin, the children are wrought, even as others. Even as others. It says that at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in this world. That is the life of a sinner. They are ungodly. They are aliens to God. They are aliens to righteousness. They are aliens to purity and uprightness. They are aliens to the family of God. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Multiply therefore your members which are upon the earth. We read all the way to verse 9. Fornications, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which they say, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Can you see that word again? The children of who? Disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now, somebody say, but now. Somebody say, but now. Ye also put up all this. Say so you are born again. Put up anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put up the old man with his deeds. Let's uh, take a little uh, fleshing out of the fifth verse, verse 5. Where it says, multiply therefore your members which are upon the earth. And the first thing there is what? Fornication. What is fornication? Fornication is sexual intercourse between two people that are not married to each other. That are not married. I know many at times, and there is no problem where you say, uh, unmarried people are... Uh, with a uh, unmarried, uh, unmarried person with another unmarried person, and then you say uh, married and uh, married, that one is adultery. Fornication is fornication, it's sexual perversion. It doesn't matter whether you're a teenager, whether you're a youth, whether you are married, whether you are whoever you are, fornication. You get into it, you are doomed. And you know some people get into it in a modern way. They get into pornography and they start practicing that. They watch this, they watch that. Listen, there may be all kinds of things for you on your telephone, on the internet, on the television. The perverted world of our time for every advertisement and marketing they do, they may be showing all kinds of things that are unhealthy for your spirit being. You are the one now that will be disciplined enough to know what to watch and not to, or what not to watch. Amen? You are the one that will be disciplined enough to not pick up your phone and go to pornographic sites immoral sides because if you do you 
will be cursed. And if care is not taken, your children will be cursed. Because some of those things comes with evil spirits and power. That you watch them, they get into you. And that is why uh, there are people that will tell you, and my father, Lord, spoken to me. All they did was watch pornography and to be free from pornography became like a problem. Just like people addicted to drugs, addicted to smoking, they are addicted to pornography. The spirit, once it gets hold of them, they lose balance. They can't control themselves again until they get to that thing. I pray the Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. Fornication. Fornication. Some of them, when they don't see where to, to practice it, they go to small children. Some of them, they go to hallows. They go to play houses. They wait on it, until it is dark in the night. Where nobody will be able to see them on time. And then they don't go with their vehicle so you don't see their tag. Then they go to playhouses for vacation. It's being controlled by the spirit of this age. Let no devil deceive you. I will do it. After I have done it, I will go and repent. No, it doesn't work that way. The soul that sinned it shall die. The next thing there is what? Uncleanness. Anything that is dirty, filthy, anything that is morally or spiritually impure, whether in your thoughts or in your action. You no, know, Jesus actually tells us that if you look at a lady to lust after her, it is as bad as if you have actually slept with her. So, why do you want to destroy your life? And the devil has all these people out there, all these boys out there. And some, I see some men, I don't know what name they call it. I've been so much here in the law for so long that I don't even know some of the things out there. But then I see the kind of pants they wear is, is such that uh, you see their private area poking out from it. And those things are not regular pants like this one. And I question, what is their intention? It's just like a lady putting on clothes and showing her cleavage. The lady is inviting you with her cleavage. You are inviting them with your private area. Caused children. Caused children. Therefore, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, Old things are passed away. If you have the spirit of Christ in you, that spirit will tell you what is right and will let you know this is wrong. You cannot do it. Before you put on a clothes, you will know from your spirit. You look at yourself in the mirror. When you bought a clothes and you begin to tear it, or you don't even need to tear it anymore, you have people that will help you tear them and sell them to you at a very, very expensive price because they know that something is wrong with your brain. I need an amen. And then, uh, in, in those days, when you have a cloth and there is a little tear, you want to go to the tailor to fix it for you. Am I right? But right now, you are actually looking for the rat yourself. Don't you know that rag is meant for people that are having mental problems? When I see people wearing that, I know something is wrong with their brain. They may be educated, but they have mental problems. Mental problems. They can't think right. They are not operating under the spirit of the Lord. The people that are mental, crazy, mad out there, they are under the influence of a spirit and understand that every crazy person has their level. So you just have your own level. But the truth is, you are also equally crazy. Amen? Thank God I don't know which of you is wearing it, so 
you won't say I'm preaching you. But if you are wearing it, then I'm preaching you. Praise God. And if you are hearing me from uh, YouTube or whatever, and you are doing it, all you need to do is repent because I'm preaching about you today. And it's not me preaching about you. The Holy Ghost is ministering unto you. I need a better one. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Anything that is unclean in your heart, unclean thoughts, unclean deeds, unclean relationship, unhealthy relationship, especially with the opposite sex. Or, sorry, it's opposite. It's not even only opposite sex right now. Even with people of the same sex, with you. uncleanness, uncleanness. Anything that is shady, anything that to be ashamed of, if it comes to the light, get rid of it. And then he went for us to say, "What's the next one? Now help me here." Inordinate affection. What is that word? Inordinate. Inordinate. It means excessive, undue, unwarranted, immoderate, extravagant, unreasonable, disproportionate, unethical, uh, unprincipled affection. You know, many of us will just read through. That's why I have to go to the dictionary and dig out the meaning and the interpretation of some of all these big words. Inordinate affection, unethical affection, a lady and a boy, unethical affection, the pastor and the members of the church, unethical affection, the relationship. It may even be in your place of work, on your job, your career, unethical affection, inordinate. And then it says evil concupiscence. That is another strong desire or appetite, especially when it is sexually or in the area of lusting. How, is, how are you? He you said you're born again. And then he went further to say covetousness. Covetousness. It's, and that means eagle, I'm sorry, eager or excessive desire for wealth of possession. If you look at all this, you see relationship between them all. That tells you the relationship between the powers of darkness and evil spirit and the nature of sin controlling man. You have one, you have the other one. That is the nature of sin. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envies, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit everybody. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. I get to the second point. The contrast between the new with the new creature. The contrast with the new creature. Come back again to First Corinthians, Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, help me somebody. I can't hear somebody. He's a new creature. Don't wait for anybody to tell you a new creature. Let the Spirit of the Lord confirm with you. Let there be an inner witness within you. And please pay attention here. If you notice there are things that need to be attended to in your life, taken care of in your life, for goodness sake, go back to the cross. Go back to the cross. And tell the Lord to help you. Don't excuse it. The anger is there. The bad language is there. The animosity is there. The hatred is there. The lusting is there. Don't excuse it. Just say, Lord, I need you. And it will.
will help you in Jesus' name. He will work things out for you. And you'll be glad when the Lord fixes it for you. Romans chapter 6, verse 17. Romans chapter 6, verse 17. But God, thanks that ye were the servants of sin in the past. But now you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. In the past, you were servants of sin. But now you are obeying the Lord from where? From the heart. From the heart. And that means whether anybody is there or not, they are obeying. They are obeying. And the grace to continue to obey, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 20 says, For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin, and become servants of God, ye have become, ye, ye have your fruit unto What's the word? Say it again. Are you afraid of it? Are you sure of it? Holiness and the end everlasting life. You will not lose your reward in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 7, verses 5 and 6. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. The motions of sin, the pressure of sin, the passion of sin, the promptings of sin was controlling us, orchestrated by the spirit of the devil. It says, but now, verse 6, we are delivered from the law that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the latter. I need an amen. amen. When you are born again, you serve by the spirit of the living God. You live by the spirit of the living God. You walk by the spirit of the living God. You, you, you relate with people by the spirit of the living God. First Corinthians chapter, nine, chapter 6 verse 9. Chapter 6, from verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Stop right there. Look at me. Why do you come to church? Why do you waste your time coming to church? If your goal is not to make it to heaven, you are wasting time. If your goal is just to make friends so that when you die, people will bury you, you are wasting time. If your goal is that when you have a baby, you can see people that will come and do ceremony with you, you are wasting your time. So that when you do your wedding or your child or your, your son, your daughter is wedding, so that you can see people, you are wasting your time. There are many other places you can get better people than in the church to do all those. They will even do it better than you expected. They will surround you, they will drink, they will get drunk. They will, they will even kill one another at your ceremony. Why are you coming to the church, brother? You're coming to the church as a sick person. You're coming to the church as a helpless person seeking for help. You come into the church for the surgeon of heaven to perform the eternal surgery on your heart. That you might not remain the same old person that you used to be. So then that is your goal. The church is to correct you. And the word you hear from the church is to convert you. When you come to the church the way you are, you submit yourself to the surgeon of heaven to perform that operation in you, and when it is done, you are completely cured from that sickness and disease. I need a better one. 
And when you're out of the sleep, when you come out of that uh, uh, anesthesia, you're a different person. And then they tell you the tumor is gone. I declare the tumor of sin will be taken away from you. And then you will leave. You will leave. And this is exactly what they do, what the Lord does. Just like the doctors on earth. When they take that bad thing away from you, let's use an example of heart transplant. That heart was failing. And if nothing is done in no time, that person will be gone. But then you want for surgery and they take that bad heart away and they give you a new heart. Then you have your life back. The life back. The life back. Your real life has been taken away by the devil, the enemy of your soul. Almost as soon as you were born. David said, for I was conceived in sin and in iniquity did my mother give back unto me. Psalm 58 verse 3 says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking lies. come to Christ, everything is turned around. Genuine conversion. And then you'll be able to say, it is no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me, in me. In me, in me, Jesus is alive in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that lives in me. And anywhere you go, even in the face of death, you stand for Jesus. In the face of opposition and persecution, you live for Jesus. And everybody will know this one is different. The devil will know this one is different. And your life will be different in Jesus' name. When that change comes, and now you are a saint of God, we we'll see the humility of Christ in you. You read it in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. of Christ will be there in you. Amen? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You have the mind of Christ in you. When you are now a saint, you are faithful. You are friendly. Number one, the friend of Jesus. <laughs> and you know that if you are the friend of Jesus, you can't be the friend of the devil. You can't be the friend of the world. You can't be a friend of sin. And if you're a friend of Jesus, pay attention. You can be a friend to this mortal body. Because there are things the flesh will want you to do, and you say, no, it's flesh. You used to have control over me, but now I have control over you. I need a name in there. And you begin to bear spiritual fruit. Spiritual fruit. When you really genuinely give your life to Christ Jesus, it will be easy for you to tell anybody, everybody, I'm sorry. Amen? And not the way you used to do it before. Now you mean it from the depth of your heart. When you say, I'm sorry, you are indeed sorry. And when you are genuinely converted, you don't have this fake, Amen? American laughter. Somebody say amen. Give it to me. Let me see how they do it. Hi. They don't mean it. Amen. 
Be real. Tell somebody be real. When you're a real child of God, people will know you are real. And being a Christian does not mean you cannot make mistakes. When you made mistakes, people will know he's not like that. He was not like that. Or she's not like that. It is a mistake. And they will let it go. Amen? Amen? Did I tell you I used to tell, 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 give testimony? Do you want another one today? I must have told you before. Maybe you, I shouldn't say it again. You know, years back, I was then working in the bank. I was then a junior staff. But by level of my, don't mind the grammar, by level of my juniority, you won't find that in the dictionary. Junior juniority. Amen. I could authorize certain payments. And then I authorized some. And it turns out that hundreds of thousands of money was gone. Stolen away. And then the cops were called in. Because they must do their investigation. They must find the thief. And whoever, whoever authorizes the check is the number one suspect. You know, in this country, when your wife dies, your husband dies, who is the number one suspect? The spouse. Or an immediate family member. So they feel you have been trained to know true signature, to know this and that. So you are the first person they pick. And then they came for me. And blessed be the name of the Lord. And my manager told the cops that came. Because of the amount of money involved and the, the the owner of the account, it was government account, not just an individual. It's a national account, so you can tell. And that is, and you know, you know everywhere that this post people they, they they control millions, amen. And that was the national account for the sports of the whole nation of Nigeria. A lot of money was gone, but then my manager said to the cops. You can go with anybody from this office, but not this young man. The cops, they look at her, they say, Madam, why? She said, because we know she, he cannot do it. I'm talking about as far back as the early 80s. If as young as I was that time, in my 20s, I could stand for the law in such a way that my manager, I really have access to her. She was way up there. I was way this low. I didn't know that they were watching everything. I was just living my life. Let your light so shine before men that they may see and glorify your Father who is in heaven. When you have that life, the world will see what we see. I made a mistake. There was no question. But the Lord fought for me. I was supposed to go to jail. It's today. I didn't enter into that jail. Amen? You may make a mistake. God will find a way of deliverance for you. But maintain your own integrity before the Lord. Don't follow the multitude to commit sin. Amen? And may I tell you this. We well, bless the Lord for those of you coming to this church. But you are all under radar. What did I just say? Under the radar. The radar of the Almighty God. Amen? And then the radar of your fellow members. Amen? Do you know your fellow sister in the church? Do you know them? Hello, is that just lost you? Amen. Okay. Pastor Charles, do you know your member? Church member, do you know your pastor? Aha. Uh -huh. If your pastor is fooling around, will you know? He may hide it for so long. One day. He won't do that. Amen. In Jesus' name. One day, 
a brother, so called, was around prostitutes. He was just about going inside there. Nobody knows for how long he's been doing that, but that day he was caught. One day he'll be caught. And I prayed it was not being caught at best. Saints do restitution. You are born again. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, verse uh, 16. It says, Herein do I exercise myself that I might have a conscience void of offense both towards God and towards man. Restitution. You offended somebody. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of humility. Is the spirit of peace. Is the spirit of love and of joy. That spirit will convict you. And then you go to the neighbor and say, my brother, my sister, I am sorry for what I did, for what I said. For the way I said it, I'm sorry I didn't mean it that way. And if you meant it, I'm sorry, I didn't know what came upon me that made me to do that. Restitution. And paraventure, you stole something when you were not born again. For instance, when I was in the high school in the 70s, I went to the library legitimately. I borrowed some books. But I never returned them until I graduated from that school. So I consider myself smart. Spiritually smart. Demonically smart. Because that was what everybody does. But then, praise be the Lord. I gave my life to Christ. And I remember I had to travel back to my former school to do restitution. No, that one I think I wrote them a letter. And then got the books back. Actually, I couldn't find a book, I had to buy new ones. And then I lived with an uncle, and I did some things, and you know, if I've had my testimony, I was a very gentle boy. Very quiet and easy going. If you put water in my mouth, it would hardly drop. But I was not born again. Are you paying attention here? So my uncle, the wife, they loved me to death. He was a saint. A saint without Christ. Amen? I knew there were some bad things I did that they knew nothing about. Ignorance. When I gave my life to Christ, I traveled back. And it was so bad that when I sat down with my uncle and the wife to do my restitution, my uncle looked at me and he said, I don't understand what you are talking about. He said, because before you said you found this your new religion, your life has always been wonderful. He said, what you are talking about? That is normal for everybody. It is normal for sinner. But when you are born again, you know that this is not normal. It's abnormal. It's normal for sinner. It's normal for ungodly people. It's normal for candidates of hell. But it's not normal for you. For you. You made a statement when you suddenly realize that it's not correct. You correct it. Restitution. 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 Now, pay attention here. In the days when you were boys and girls, you stole somebody's boyfriend or girlfriend because you were both sinners of And it is a fact. And you hurt their spirit. You damaged their heart. Now that you're born again, I'm sorry, even though you were wrong, I was wrong, but I was wronger than you. You hear that grammar? What is the grammar? I was wronger than you. Amen? Say I'm sorry. You stole money from your employer, and you know how people steal. They don't just go to the treasury and pack the money. How do they steal? They falsify information. They change the record. They divide.